Hello, my name is Bruce Jankowitz. I'm a product manager for the Zego Fire Safety Modular Fire Alarm Portfolio for Siemens Building Technologies. Our how-to video series will walk you through the basic controls and functions for operating your DeSego Fire Safety Modular panel. The DeSego Fire Safety Modular is a part of the Siemens networkable fire alarm system and can be infinitely configured by adding additional cards and modules. Additional capabilities include field device circuits, also known as detectors, notification appliance circuits, also known as horn strobes, network cards, custom message cards, amplifiers, auxiliary relays, and additional power. Other optional modules include notification appliance circuit expansions, releasing modules, digital alarm communication transmitters, remote displays, and controls. The makeup of each modular system is unique, and your system has been customized based on your specific needs. It may be a bit different than other systems you may see. To begin, I will describe the operating interface and go over its main components and features. The operating unit has five main sections, display and associated controls, system status lamps, event notifications, menu controls, and the internal buzzer. First, we have the LCD display in the center of the operator's interface. This is where you can view everything related to the operation of your fire alarm system. The display provides system status updates in real time, current events such as alarms, and displays all menu selections, which we will review later on. In normal standby mode, the display will indicate system status normal with the current date and time, as well as other location-specific messages. The system status LEDs show basic system operation. These status lights display power, the state of the system audibles, the horns, strobes, the speakers, and if any part of the system is turned off or disabled, as well as if the main fire alarm computer is functioning properly. The power LED will glow steady green to indicate that AC power is on and will flash when the system is operating on battery power. The partial system disabled LED will glow steady yellow to indicate that the device is disabled. Other system operation LED indicators are audible state or CPU failure. On the top center of the operator unit are the event notification lamps or LEDs. Whenever there is an event in a system, these LEDs will illuminate. For example, when an alarm occurs, the alarm LED will illuminate, so at a quick glance, the operator can see the state of the fire alarm system. On the right side of the main interface are the system navigation buttons. These are used for drilling into the menus of the modular system, as well as showing graphical and textual information of these events. While not visible, the buzzer lets the user know there is activity within the modular system. The buzzer will sound steady when an unacknowledged event is present, such as a supervisory or a trouble condition. When all conditions are acknowledged, the buzzer will be silent. When an event occurs in the system, the display automatically enters the alert mode. This alert mode allows the user to see and control all of the active events. If this event type is alarm, trouble, or supervisory, the appropriate LED blinks and may cause the notification appliances to sound and the audibles to play messages throughout the building. The internal buzzer sounds and the tab on the display for the corresponding event queue flashes. Now we'll concentrate on the display and the event controls. There are a set of four buttons above and four below the LCD screen. These are soft buttons that change depending on each specific situation. For this discussion, we will focus on the buttons below the LCD. The buttons used to manage events are the soft or context-specific ones below the LCD. The text directly above each button will update to indicate the current function of each button. The green LED above the button is illuminated to indicate that the current key press is available. Any valid key press on the modular system will have the LED directly adjacent to it lit. When an event such as an alarm or trouble comes in, the button on the lower left has the LED directly above it lit, and the text above it shows exactly what pressing the button will accomplish. Now we'll create an alarm event and walk through the steps to operate or control this event. Just above the lower left button, the display will show the selection, becomes an acknowledge button. The LED associated with this button is lit, showing that the button is now active. Pressing this button will acknowledge this event. Just above the lower left button, the display will show the selection becomes an acknowledge button. The LED associated with this button is lit, showing that the button is now active. Pressing this button will acknowledge this event. It will also turn off the internal panel buzzer. The alarm LED will change from flashing to steady, 
and the event display changes from an exclamation mark to a check mark on the left of the description. The intent of acknowledging events indicates that the operator is aware that the event has occurred. Once the event is acknowledged, the next step is to silence the audibles. The silence button is now shown on the display and the LED above the button is lit. When pressed, it will turn off any audibles programmed as silenceable and will light the audible silence LED. In full operation mode, silencing audibles is only done when authorized as the building occupants will not notice when the audibles are shut off. Lastly, once the event has been acknowledged and the audible silenced, the system needs to be reset. When in this state, the button on the lower right side of the display is now set for system reset and the display is updated and the adjacent LED is illuminated. Once reset, the fire panel returns to the normal standby operation. This too should only be done when authorized. This sequence is basically the same for all event types, supervisory, security, trouble, etc. These are all non-fire alarm event types and may not sound audible, therefore the silence step might be skipped. Once these events are acknowledged, the fire panel can be reset to restore the normal standby condition. Siemens offers a software program which will allow you to virtually control the operator interface of its Seagull Fire Safety Modular System. This program will allow you to create different event types and do the manipulations described here on these events. In closing, we hope this video will help your team effectively operate your DeSeagle Fire Safety Modular Fire Alarm System. Please feel free to reach out to me with any of your future fire and life safety needs. Siemens. Ingenuity for life.